Welcome back. In the last video, we had a look at some of the requirements gathering and the stakeholders that would be involved in uh, the design of a, a network. Uh, now we want to talk a little bit about the connectivity uh, side of things. And there's a, a bunch of key terms here that we need to, uh, to really make sure that we're comfortable with uh, as we start talking about networks. Uh, so we'll, we'll basically work through these in order. So scale is really uh, how many devices do we expect to put on a network? Is it only going to be a few? Is it small scale or is it going to be large scale like the, you know, the internet as a whole where there are now billions of devices uh, connecting? And you know, design elements will vary greatly based on uh, what scale of network you're trying to achieve. Um, a link is simply the thing which connects two devices. So on this slide, we have a look there at next to A, we have two computers connected by, uh, you know, some it's some kind of network link uh, that's directly connecting them. Um, that's one kind of link. Uh, in B below, we have a, a link where there's a, a bunch of them are connected, uh, and that's possible as well. But the key is that it's connecting at least two devices together. Uh, then we have nodes, and this is really the fancy word that we use for the devices. So we using node here kind of a little bit more in the mathematical sense of a, a mathematical network uh, where you have edges and nodes. Uh, so the links are the edges uh, where they're point to point links at least. Uh, and then the nodes are the devices on the network. Uh, and so point to point, uh, we hinted at this a little bit already. So if a node only, sorry, if a link only connects exactly two nodes, then it's a point to point link. It's going from one point to another. Uh, and this contrasts with a multiple access link, such as in B uh, in the diagram on the slide here, uh, where many devices uh, can connect on a multi, uh, a multiple access link. Typically there is still some upper limit on each kind of multiple access link uh, that they can deliver. And certainly there will be bandwidth limits and those sorts of things. So if we look at uh, cellular networks and those sorts of things where we connect wirelessly to the edge or Wi-Fi. Uh, there are limits and trade-offs in that, and this is also why they're not used throughout the uh, the entirety of a network because of the limitations that they do bring in. Uh, so then we have uh, switched networks. So this is um, it's a term that's come out of railways. Uh, so in the United States, uh, what we call here in Australia or in uh, Commonwealth English countries uh, railway points, uh, they would call a switch. So it's switching which track a train is going to go onto. Uh, and so on the network context, it's really about saying if we have a, a unit of data, some kind of message that's being uh, put through, um, or there's a flow of data uh, between devices, and some device has more than two links available to it, it can choose which of those to switch it onto to get it towards its destination. Uh, so it's you know, switching the route that data can take through the network to get through. Uh, and we can have circuit switched where we find a little bit more like the uh, the railway network where you could set all the points in a particular way and now there is a path where data can flow through the network to get to its destination uh, and that it's exclusively used uh, for that at that point in time. In contrast, we can have a packet switched network. And so in a packet switched network, uh, we actually, for each little unit of data, we're actually deciding which way it goes. So this is a little bit more like, uh, you know, uh, sorting sheep at the gate where you can pull the gate from side to side and choose whether the uh, you know the uh, the sheep uh, are going to go into one pen or another, for example, based on whether they need shearing or uh, whether they're big enough to sell. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, but to do that, we have to break down the communications flow from being a large stream into these little pieces, into messages, into packets is what we tend to call them. A bit like in the, the postal service, you have uh, packages and envelopes uh, and things. So we have a similar kind of idea. We don't have to have a dedicated truck uh, or mailman that goes from my house to somebody else's house. We actually share that infrastructure uh, that, you know, the, the packages, the packets, the messages, the envelopes, uh, the letters that need to get delivered, get given in to some kind of uh, point on the postal network. And then they get sorted, switched all the way through. And they're sharing that facility with all of the other uh, people's post that's going through as well. So this is a much more efficient way to use the resource. And it necessarily brings about this idea of store and forward in that the postal service stores your post while it's working out how to deliver it. And then it forwards it to the next post office uh, to get it nearer to its destination until eventually that gets forwarded onto your letterbox at home. Uh, and so, yeah, 
it's very similar in that regard. Uh, and then we've already talked about point to point and multiple axis uh, in there. So we'll go on to the next slide. So uh, some more terminology. So the cloud is something which gets talked about an awful lot at the moment. And this is you know, the best way to understand the cloud is using somebody else's computer to do something. So that might be, for example, a large company like Amazon who purposely run you know, thousands, probably millions of computers by now that you can rent use of uh, in order to, uh, uh, to do the things that you want to do. Um, each device, whether it's in a cloud or just on the network at large, uh, is called a host. Uh, and so again, it's very similar to this concept of a node. Uh, the host is providing typically some kind of service. And then we have the switches in the network uh, that are connecting these hosts. So the hosts, if you like, are at the edge of the network and the switches are in the network doing this kind of routing of the data around the place. And an inter-network is when we have multiple of these networks kind of joined together. So uh, in uh, figure B here on this slide, you can actually see that there are three interconnected networks and there are these points of interconnection, these routers and gateways uh, indicated by the, uh, the round things with the arrows on them that are choosing where to send the data between these different networks. But in any case, what we want for the network to provide typically is host to host connectivity. So this is so that any host on the edge of the network anywhere can connect to any other host anywhere on the network. And to do that, we have to be able to address the hosts. So a bit like with the postal system, you have to be able to address a letter to the physical postal address in a computer network, we need to put the computer network address. And that would typically be an IPv4 or an IPv6 uh, internet protocol address, but it could be a different kind of address. And with those addresses, then the system will be able to route the, uh, the packets, the messages, the packages, however you want to think about it, um, through the network by looking at them going, ah, oh, okay, this is addressed to such and such uh, a device that lives in that part of the network. I will forward it in that direction to get it nearer to the, uh, the destination. And finally, we can have um, communications which are unicast. This is like the postal system where it goes out to exactly one recipient. Uh, we can also have multicast that goes out to many recipients. Uh, so this could be a little bit like a um, you know the, the mail out of a brochure from a particular company. They're actually sending many instances of it out. But on the computer network, we can be a little bit clever and it can be introduced into the network once and it can get delivered to uh, a whole bunch of devices. And so that's really a bit of a, a special case of the final uh, case, which is broadcast, where we actually just send uh, you know, the one message or packet to all of the devices in the network or in some part of the network. So again, it, it's, you know, we're looking at all of these different ways that the, uh, uh, you know, the, the units of data uh, can be sent around and delivered. And this packetization uh, to create generalized networks is one of the, the really key strengths of these uh, digital computer networks. So that's it uh, for this one, and we will see you in the next video.